Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and today I'm very excited to bring you another round of reading wrap-ups. This time I'm talking horror, thrillers, and true crime, which I've really been getting into again this year. And I've read some great books, including one of the most disturbing, messed up books I've read in a long time. Well, actually I've been reading a lot of disturbing books lately, so that's kind of a lie. But this one is really messed up. And unsurprisingly, I also loved it. So let's get started, starting with that book. So yes, I read American Psycho by Brent Easton Ellis, and this is a horror thriller book that follows a man who works on Wall Street. He is a corporate executive who is rich and handsome and intellectual, and we follow him throughout his life, learning quickly that he is also a psychopath. And the story is a very iconic one. I had not previously watched the movie, but I love the book so much that I ended up watching the movie at the same time, and it was so good. I'm still trying to convince my husband to watch it. I'm not sure if it's up his alley. I would describe this book as the horror version of something like The Wolf on Wall Street, and I think that's why it works so well for me, because I've always been fascinated by the the evil aspect of corporations, just the greed, the excess, and that is what this book is about. So I fully admit that this book is not going to be for everyone. In fact, I actually tried reading it a couple times before and put it aside just as a pause or a DNF for the time being because I just wasn't in the mood for something that disgusting and messed up. This book is very vulgar and viral. It has huge content warnings for violence and sexual assault and it's just one of the most uncomfortable messed up books I've read. Again, I've read a lot of messed up books lately, but this one is definitely up there. It is not for everyone. But what I liked about it is the fact that I really appreciate that while this book has all these vulgar aspects to it, it's also very intelligent, which is not something I realized going into it. But this book is smart and it plays with a lot of really interesting themes. And the main character is just so memorable. There are so many amazing paragraphs and quotes that get pulled from the book and then you see again kind of remixed within the movie and I love them. There's a whole chapter devoted to his love of Genesis and Phil Collins and I adore that section. I absolutely love those details. I found the book just so entertaining but at the same time a book that really pushes the envelope. I would love to see more by this author. I know this is his most popular and well-known book but I definitely am curious to see what else he's written. This book in a way is very literary, in a way very much a social commentary and it's really what I love about horror. I love when horror is really commenting on something else going on and it's not just about the gore and the violence but instead it's really reflective on the fact that corporate culture is terrible and it really does breed sociopaths and really I guess encourages almost the lifestyle that that surrounds and it's just fascinating how well it's done here. So if you can't tell, really recommend it as long as you're open to reading a really disturbing book with a lot of intense violence, all the content warnings again, but if you're up for it, if you haven't read this one, this is my personal recommendation that I do think it's worth your time. I thought it was really smart and really well done. Next up, we have Devil House by John Darnell. This is a 2022 release, and so I wanted to check it out. This follows a man who works as a crime writer and agrees to go and buy and live in a house that has a very violent history. He goes there and things ensue from there. This story is very fragmented to read, and that's my main complaint about it. It shifts over different time and perspective. At one point you have a second person perspective, which I'll admit I actually found really intriguing, but as a cohesive story, it didn't really come together, at least for me. And you also have the added bonus that I really do not enjoy haunted house stories or just stories that surround houses in general, so I did find the subject matter itself to be a little bit dry. I was most intrigued by the fact that it centered around a true crime writer, and so I I really hope that this book would give me feelings similar to that of say Chasing the Boogeyman or some of the true crime that I enjoy which I'll get to in a moment in this video but it really just read like a very standard horror story with just again a very fragmented plot. I have read other books by this author before and I found the same complaint there so I think this is just how the author writes and personally I don't like it. I've seen mixed reviews on this one people either love it or hate it so if you have read this book I would love to have you weigh in in the comments do you agree with me or did it work really well for you. Next we have some backlist horror and I read Bad Man by 
Dathan Auerbach, and this is the same author who wrote Pen Pal, which I think a lot of you are familiar with. But in this story, we follow a young man who, as a child, his younger stepbrother went missing and disappeared when he was under his watch. They went to the grocery store and he disappeared and was possibly never found again. The story takes place years later when this young boy is now a young man and is trying to get work. So he goes to work in the same grocery store where his brother went missing. And as you would expect with a horror story, it goes along and you follow some of the good tropes that I do personally really enjoy when it comes to like missing small children. This book has a really creepy feel to it. It has a bit of a fragmented storyline similar to the last. And I do think that it worked a little bit better in this case where it did create that atmosphere and just unsettling feeling as I was reading it. I liked pieces of it. Again, I really like this storyline. I am sucker for a missing child and just that coming of age, that loss of innocence, that looking back, the breakdown of the family, and there was a lot of good things going on. If I had a complaint, it's simply just the fact that I felt like this book didn't fully come together in the end. I thought the ending was a bit of a letdown. It's one of those times where I read the last few pages and then I go, oh wait, did I miss something? And I flip back and go, nope, nope, that was the ending, okay. And it's kind of similar to how I felt about Pen Pal, a book that had really good atmosphere that was really fragmented and eerie in a good way, but I felt like that book didn't really lead to anything in terms of a climax and a conclusion, and that's basically the exact same thing I want to say about Batman here. Glad I checked it out but it was underwhelming and I can see why it doesn't get a lot of praise or focus online because I thought it was well just okay. Next we have When a Killer Calls by John E. Douglas and this is a true crime case written by the same author who wrote Mindhunters. He of course is a famous criminologist who worked for the FBI setting up that unit and I've read him before and I was very eager to read this new one which is a new 2022 release and in this particular case again it's a true story we follow a young woman who is kidnapped near her home she is held hostage the perpetrator actually ends up calling her family and speaking with her mother which is so disturbing the way it is described in the story you get the transcripts of that to follow it and it would just be the most heartbreaking phone calls to be getting and I don't think it's a spoiler to say given the the title of this book but the kidnapping does not end well and so this is an interesting case because the story or again like the narrative it's a real true crime case but it follows not just her kidnapping but also the aftermath so they do eventually track down and identify who it was he goes to trial and is prosecuted and so they follow it all the way through and I really appreciate the fact that this case really get to see the big picture of it. So again, I like the criminology aspect, getting to create a profile for this person and how they're able to identify what type of man that this might be who would commit a crime like this and then being able to predict his behavior. And then again, following through the legal proceedings, the attempts that he makes to get a lower plea due to potential mental illness and how that is treated in court. And the author provides some really interesting commentary on those plea bargains. And so I thought that was really interesting how it was done. And so I really like this one. I've been hit or miss with his previous work only because I'm not a fan of true crime books that focus on a bunch of mini cases. And I prefer one cohesive narrative rather than a bunch of mini case studies. So in terms of a book, I found this one to be very compelling, very gripping. And I do have to give credit that I think the author did a really good job of keeping this book very victim focused. The perpetrator in no way is ever glamorized. And I think that they did a really good job because that's my one complaint when it comes to true crime is that it often makes me feel very guilty for enjoying something that comes out of such a horrific event, but I thought that this one was well treated and the focus and perspective was right on. Then we have a true crime memoir and that is Tell Me Everything by Erica Krauss. And this follows a woman who works as a private investigator working on a lawsuit to take down a university that has been showing a long history of allowing the rape and sexual assault of women to go unnoticed and unprosecuted by their star athletes. And so we follow a woman who was working with the lawyers that set up this big lawsuit case to go after the university itself. So I found the story to be incredibly compelling. I think like a lot of you, I suspect I'm not the only one, so tell me in the comments, but I've always been fascinated by the work of private investigators, the fact that they go and seek out justice and look to, again, investigate different wrongdoings, but they're not the police, they're not the FBI, they don't have have that legal 
um, backing behind them. And so I really thought that the setup was compelling. And in terms of story, this was very tough to read at times just because, again, it deals with rape and sexual assault. So of course, content warnings there, although I think they did a really good job of being mindful that some of the readers reading this might have a history themselves. So I personally, while I don't have that particular trigger, don't feel like the book was overly triggering. They really didn't go into any gross details or again, try to uh, make any more excitement or thrill out of the event itself and really just stick to the facts and really stay very, again, victim focused. So I personally found this book incredibly gripping. I really loved it. I imagine other people might complain that this book has a lot of the author's personal life woven into the story, but I personally like that. You find out that the private investigator was sexually assaulted as a child herself and is dealing with the consequences even as an adult and how it has ruined and destroyed her relationships with her family. I thought it fit into the narrative very well and for me I like that aspect because I often find that true crime can be very dry when it comes to nonfiction. so I like the fact that that really added some character to the story and I thought enhanced it but again I can see other people preferring it to just stick to the case but I personally am a huge fan of those like cross crossover where it's part memoir, part true crime. And again, I think this one is compelling for those of you that perhaps don't read a lot of true crime that's about murders and serial killers, but this gives a different aspect into true crime and deals with some really heavy subject matter in a really smart, nuanced way. Now, moving over to thrillers, I want to talk about The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. This story follows a woman who, as a child, was the victim of a crime. And so because of that experience, she ends up being fascinated by the legal system, about criminal cases, and ends up starting a blog as an adult that is a website that focuses on investigating and rehashing different cold cases. Within the story, she gets particularly interested in one case and ends up getting to contact the person who was possibly presumed to be the perpetrator of this crime and the story goes from there. This is a story that reminded me a lot of the author's previous book, The Broken Girls, and I'm not going to spoil anything there, but I will say that if you've read The Broken Girls by her, this book is really, really similar in terms of theme, in terms of narrative structure, in terms of character work, all of that, and so I couldn't help but compare it to that. And I would say that my enjoyment of this book is very similar to my enjoyment of that book. I I enjoyed going through the story. I found it easy to follow with a good plot and a good pace, but I don't know how memorable this book is going to be because looking back now, I can't remember a lot about Broken Girls and I'm already starting to forget things about this one even though I just read it. So I would say it was an entertaining book, but again, perhaps not an all-time new favorite thriller, but I enjoyed it. I will say that if you are looking for a large focus on the true crime aspect, that is kind of on the side like while I think it's fascinating that she had a blog I don't feel like you got a lot of I don't know the cold case amateur detective feelings that I was hoping to get from this book and so I kind of wanted more from it it was still entertaining I flew through it in a couple days and I'd recommend it if you're a fan of her work I think that you'll be decently satisfied so that's it for this video here I'd love to hear of the books I talked about which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself and I'd also love to hear what is one of your favorite really messed up books so this is different than the other week where I talked about uncomfortable books this time we're just going with straight up messed up books really disturbing. Let me hear them. I would love to do another video recommending all my favorite disturbing books and so that is in the works but I got to read a few more disturbing reads before I'm ready to film that. All that being said if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of horror, thriller, science fiction, and fantasy. You can help me out by sharing this video around online, giving it a thumbs up, hitting the little notification bell so that you never miss a video and if you want to drop a comment you can just drop a emoji with a stack of books and that still helps me with the magical YouTube algorithm. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.